Danger lurking around every corner. Death waiting under our feet. Oh, Imagine that lockdown is now my enemy, and our sole purpose is to eliminate each other from the game. This is a hundred days in a prank war in hardcore Minecraft, and here's what happened. It was the first day in the world, and I just spawned in. But quickly, I spotted something pretty unusual. Wait. Wait, what? What are you doing here? <laughs> what are you doing here? Get out of my world! I was I trying to do a Salo 100 days. I just days. spawned into this world. You're gonna kill me, it's hardcore. You can't just be yeah. punching me. Good, I wanna be alone. Get just out of this get world. away. Oh my, how is he even here? What? <laughs> At this point, myself and Lockdown were both really confused, as we were both meant to be starting our own solo 100 days, but somehow we both ended up spawning into the same world. Anyway, once the confusion was over, I got to work in gathering some wood, crafting some stone tools, and murdering some innocent animals. Then, once I'd had my fair share of killing, I made myself a furnace and started cooking up some food. On day two, I decided I was going to start exploring the area, and hopefully I'd come across a nice place to build myself a base. However, while I was exploring this spruce forest, I came across this weird chest, so I decided to go and check it out. Ooh, a chest. What's in here? Wheat seeds and fe- What? What? Oh my- I'm almost <laughs> dead again! Silly gamers. Get out of my world. This is oh a warning. My. Leave my world alone. How did you already make this hole? Oh my. After escaping lockdown's cunning trap, I thought it was time to set myself some goals. The goals I decided were to make a fortress to keep lockdown out, to eliminate lockdown with a sneaky trap, and to be the first one to kill the ender dragon. Now that I had some goals set for myself, I decided to start exploring again to be able to find somewhere to build. And while I was exploring, I was thinking of all different traps I could do to get back at lockdown. Throughout most of day 3, I was still exploring the world, and along the way I was murdering more animals. Eventually, I came across this small village, so I decided to start stealing their wheat and killing their cows. Also, luckily, this village had a blacksmith, so I managed to get myself some early iron gear. I started out day 4 by defending the village from some pesky mobs. And then later on, I finally settled on a place that I could build. But obviously, to be able to build anything, I would need some resources. So I spent the rest of day 4 collecting some cobblestone and also some wood. Then on day 5, once I had enough resources, I quickly got to build it. By the morning of day 7 my house was finally complete, so I gathered up all my resources and started moving them into my base. Then once everything was moved in, I decided to go and see if I could find Lockdown's base. Eventually I came across Lockdown's base up in these mountains, and suddenly I came up with my first prank. And get this creeper. Come here creeper. Come on. No. Come on creeper. Oh what the hell? Come on, Creeper! It's, it's... Ah! <laughs> to be honest, that prank went a lot better than I thought it would. And also, you've got to love that manly scream from lockdown. Ah! <laughs> Once I was back at my base on day 8, I decided to start preparing to go mining. I crafted up some torches, some pickaxes, and I also got some more food ready. Now I was all sorted to hop down into the caves. Finally, after four days of mining, I'd managed to get myself quite a lot of stuff. Once I got back home on day 12, I started smelting up all of my iron. Then I crafted myself a full set of iron armour, and then I decided to quickly nip out to get some wood. Wait, what are you doing here? I just wanted to flex all this lovely iron I got. Uh, well, I've got loads of iron of my own. Wait. Um, looks a bit less than mine, actually. Wait, I had like three stacks before. Um, That's why are you strange. over here then? Was this know. you? 
<laughs> I'll kill this horse. Leave me alone. I'll kill no, this horse. don't. Why are you obsessed with killing horses? I'll kill the horse. No, just get away. Go back to <laughs> your little house. Once I'd finished chasing Lockdown away from my base, I realized that he'd stolen 24 of my iron. So I definitely have to get him back at some point. On day 13, I decided to head out to try and get some more food. But it turns out me and Lockdown both had the same idea. So we found ourselves competing to kill all of the nearby animals. And also once again, Lockdown decided to pointlessly murder a bunch of horses. But I guess it's better them than me. Because I needed to get back at Lockdown for stealing my iron and also killing those horses, I decided to spend day 14 preparing for my next small prank. I prepared by making myself a small chicken pen and then luring some chickens back into it. Day 15 and 16 were both dedicated to getting more chickens inside my pen. I did this by collecting seeds to breed them and also luring a load more chickens in. And by the end of day 16, after a lot of hard work, I'd managed to get myself quite a lot of chickens. Day 17 I spent waiting for my chickens to lay some eggs. And also while I was waiting, I spotted this cheeky creeper letting himself into my base. I then ran around to the creeper to try and teach him a lesson, but he just ended up making an ugly hole in front of my base. Finally by day 18 I had all the eggs I would need for my prank. So I quickly grabbed them and started heading over to Lockdown's base. Once I was outside Lockdown's base, it seemed like there was no one home. So I quickly headed to his front door and started spamming some eggs. Once all my eggs were gone, his house was packed full of annoying baby chickens. And the best part is, if he killed them all, he wouldn't even get any food. So with a job well done, I started heading back home. Oh, what's this say? Press lever for three diamonds. Ah! <laughs> oh my. No, what? I'm drowning. See ya. <laughs> is, this, is this obsidian? Oh my. He's just gone. I'm, oh no, I'm actually going to drown. It's not break. Wait, wait, wait. Oh my, I'm so glad I have this bucket. But now I've still got mine all the way out of obsidian with an iron pickaxe. Great. Now that I was underground in Lockdown's obsidian trap, I had to spend all of day 19 getting back to the surface. Wait, what the... By the next morning, I was getting pretty tired of Lockdown's pranks. So I decided to start planning out a fortress that would keep him away. And then from day 21 to 23, I was collecting myself some cobblestone and some wood. Then finally, by day 24, I had all the resources that I would need. Eventually, after six days of hard work, my fortress was now complete. And I even decided to add a little secret entrance to make it even harder for Lockdown to break in. Then once I'd moved all my items into my new base, Lockdown decided to show up at my front gate. Well, I see you've been busy. Uh, yeah, I thought I'd build just a little something to keep you out. What have you been up to? Uh, nothing much. Just built a little farm, actually. What, so you haven't even been building a house or anything? Nah, just a nice little farm. Okay, so you've only still got your little starter base over there? Yeah. Alright, well I'm going to go back to farming. Have fun in your nice little castle. It's not little. Oh, I fell in the hole. <laughs> oh my. Because I didn't fully trust Lockdown that he hadn't built a base, I decided to try and sneak over to his area. But before I had a chance to look around, he chased me away. 
On day 32, I decided to cook up some food and head out in the search of a jungle. This is because I would need some bamboo for my next prank. After a whole day of searching, I finally found a jungle. So I collected up some bamboo and then decided to raid this jungle temple, as it had loads of useful redstone that I could use to prank lockdown. Once I got back home on day 34, I started preparing my prank for lockdown. And then I also headed down into the caves to collect some string. But this was a lot more dangerous than I thought it would be, as I was almost blown up by several creepers. However, eventually I did manage to get out of the cave with all the string I needed. The next morning, I prepared everything that I would need to prank Lockdown, and once everything was ready, I headed over to his base. Once I got there, it luckily seemed like there was no one home, so I quickly got to work on building my prank. And I think it's safe to say the prank was pretty successful. Then on day 36, I enjoyed watching Lockdown struggle to clean up the mess, and then I went to see what he had to say. Are you having fun cleaning this up? Not really, to be honest. Why did you do this? Well, you're the one that tried to drown me in obsidian. Well, um, I've got something nice planned for you, so don't worry about it. Oh, uh, well, I'm going to go prepare for whatever you've got planned and have fun with your burnt base. Okay, see you soon. Oh, uh, that does not sound good. Once I got back on day 37, I thought it'd probably be a good idea if I barricaded up all of my windows. And then soon enough, lockdown showed up in front of my base. At first, I was confused with what he was doing, but then he flicked a lever and a TNT was shot straight into my base. He continued to shoot three more TNT right at the front wall, and by the time he ran away, the damage was done. I then had to spend all of day 38 repairing the front of my castle, and I thought I would definitely have to get back at lockdown for this. By day 39, I knew the pranks were getting serious, so I thought it would be a good idea to protect myself with some diamond armour. So I spent the whole day preparing to go mining. Eventually, after 6 long days of mining, I managed to get myself 47 diamonds. So the next morning, I headed back to the surface and crafted myself a full set of diamond armour and tools. This meant that I would hopefully be protected against all of Lockdown's traps. Now that I'd upgraded my gear, I thought it was time to start working on my next project. So for all of day 47 and 48, I was collecting resources so I could complete it. Then on day 49, I crafted up all my resources and got to work on constructing my project. Finally, by the next day, the project was complete. And it looks like this villager was really eager for me to show it off as he was standing right over the lever. So I quickly flicked it. And yes, it is a massive subscribe button, which means if you're enjoying the video, make sure to subscribe and see if we can hit 60,000 subscribers. Also, is it just me or does this villager really like staring at me? Ah. Anyway, on day 51, I started gathering together all the resources I would need for my next prank on lockdown. And once I had everything I needed, I started heading over to his base. However, before I managed to get to his base, I spotted something above it. That was a giant like sign. Which reminds me to remind you to get this video to 5,000 likes for another duo 100 days. Anyway, once I got to his base, it seemed like the coast was clear. So I started digging in the surrounding terrain and made some noise machines. And hopefully they'd be really really annoying. Then once I got back on day 52, I found something a bit unusual about my base. Wait, why is this sign? Subscribe to lock- oh my. Do they all say subscribe to lockdown? Game is more like lame it. <laughs> why are you so poor? Because I've got full diamond up. That one doesn't even say anything. Game is <laughs> not nice. Oh, wait. I read it the wrong way. <laughs> Oh my god, there's literally- <laughs> there's science everywhere, yeah. What does this one say? Bet you thought you'd got them all. Oh my. He's put them everywhere. I can speed bridge better than you. Let's test this. Hey, I made it further. Well, now I guess I've got to find every single sign and break it. While I was dealing with cleaning up my base, Lockdown had just got back to his. Um... Why can I hear a bell? Wait, no. There's more! <laughs> no! 
by day 53, both of us had cleaned up our bases. So I decided to head down into the mines and grab myself some obsidian. I needed the obsidian so that I would be able to go to the nether and get some blaze rods. And finally, by the end of the day, the nether portal was ready, so I stepped through. Hey, what are you doing here? This is my nether. What are you doing here? I just came for a portal up there. My portal's down there. You know I'm going to find the nether fortress before you, right? No, you're not. <laughs> yes, I am. Okay, well, we'll see about that. Yes, we will. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, you saw nothing. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah, he's got no hope. I'm going to find it first. After finding that lockdown was in the nether as well, we decided to try and race to see who could find the fortress first. And along the way, I found some pretty weird things. Um, what? <laughs> oh yeah, and also I tried to be like Dream and run across lava with a boat, but this happened. However, once I finally got over the embarrassment, I managed to find the nether fortress. The next day, I quickly started to build up to the fortress, but then suddenly, lockdown appeared. Wow. Where are you going? I found the fortress. <laughs> hey, what's that? Told you I'd find it first. Barely. Ah! No. Yes. <laughs> no, get away. Get off. I want it first. No, no, I'm going to die. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yes. Oh, my. <laughs> See you later. Oh, no, you're not running away like that. Oh, he got the achievement first. Once I finally entered the fortress, the search for blaze rods began. I was running around the whole fortress and I couldn't find any blazes anywhere. Then suddenly I spotted Lockdown's name in the wall and it turns out he tried to hide the blaze spawner from me. But I wasn't going to let him off that easily and I quickly entered and started killing the blazes. Myself and Lockdown both battled for the rest of the day to try and get blaze rods. And in the end, I managed to get nine of them. Then I spent the whole next day exploring the rest of the fortress, and along the way I got myself some nether warts and I looted some chests. Finally, by day 60, I had everything I needed from the nether, so I spent the whole day finding my way back to the portal. Once I got back the next day, I quickly emptied out all of my inventory into my chests, but I couldn't help to notice that the inside of my castle looked a little empty, so I decided to spend the next two days collecting resources so I could decorate. Then, on day 63, once I had everything I needed, I got to work. Um, well, I came outside to look at how my base looks, but then I saw this giant thing that I'm guessing... What? <laughs> what? No! Oh my... Wait! Don't hide in that little hole, come out. <laughs> ah! Yes, once again, it seems like Lockdown has decided to prank me, so I would definitely have to get him back soon. But obviously, before I could do anything else, I had to spend the rest of the day cleaning up this big mess. Once the mess was cleaned up, I decided to start making myself a brewing area, because obviously I now had blaze rods that I got from the nether. Then, once the brewing area was finished, I decided to head over to Lockdown's base to try and come up with a prank that I could do in retaliation. Once I got over there, it seemed like no one was home, so I crept up to his window and I spied that he had a dog, and that gave me a good idea for my next prank. Also, it looks like Lockdown really needs to start lighting up his base. The next morning, I quickly rushed home to start brewing up some potions, and the potion I decided to make was a shape-shifting potion. This means I could turn into anything I wanted. So once the potions were ready, I quickly grabbed one and headed back to Lockdown's base. Then once I got there, I stood next to his dog and threw the potion. Then instantly, I turned into a clone of his dog. Now all that was left to do was to hide Lockdown's actual dog and then wait for him to come home. Good boy, Mark. Wait, why is it not let me... Wow! Ah, oh, oh, what, what? what the hell? Mark, what are you doing? <laughs> ah! <laughs> 
What? Goodbye. Oh, I almost died. <laughs> once that strange prank was over, I quickly ran back home. And once I was safely back in my fortress, I couldn't believe that that prank actually worked. Anyway, on day 71, I thought it was time to start preparing to enchant. So I spent the whole day searching around the area for sugarcane, and by the end of the day, I planted it all around my base. Then on day 72, it was time to get some cows. So I made myself a little pen and then spent the rest of the day trying to find some cows and luring them in. Also, at one point in the day, I saw Lockdown sneaking away from my base, but I thought he was probably just spying on me. On day 73, I headed towards the village to try and find more wheat to breed my cows. And when I got there, this weird villager started following me. Oh. Hello, villager. Hmm. You... Ah, hmm. what? <laughs> Why has that villager got a sword? Hmm. Wait. Hmm. Wait, is this locked down? Hmm. I'm gonna die! Get away! <laughs> it is locked down. <laughs> it turns out when I caught lockdown sneaking away the other day, he was actually going back home after stealing one of my shape-shifting potions, which then he obviously used to turn into a villager and prank me. But this prank war was far from over, and I would definitely have to get him back. Anyway, on day 74, I decided that while I was waiting for my cows to breed and for my sugarcane to grow, that I should spend some time collecting XP so that I could actually enchant. So I spent the rest of day 74 and all of day 75 killing mobs and getting XP. Eventually, after a while of grinding, I had myself 38 levels. And best of all, my sugarcane had grown and I'd bred up loads of my cows. So I quickly collected some of my sugarcane and slaughtered most of my cows and got to work on constructing an enchanting table. Eventually, once the enchanting table was complete, I grabbed myself some lapis and started enchanting. Then finally, after using up all of my levels, I had four pieces of enchanted gear. Now that I had enchanted gear, it was time to get back at lockdown with another prank. So I spent all of day 77 collecting all the resources I would need. Then on day 78, I snuck into lockdown's area and I began constructing my trap. After two long days, the trap was ready. So I took my position and waited for lockdown. Wait, wait, what? <laughs> what? I'm stuck in a box. What even happened? I swear there wasn't water on the floor. Luckily, lockdown fell for the trap and it went exactly as planned. So once he was trapped underground, I quickly left his base and ran back home. I thought that we would soon be going to the end. So I decided to head back into the nether to try and get some ender pills because obviously we would need them for ender eyes to get into the end. Once I got there, I realized that lockdown had had the same idea. So we ended up battling over the enderman. Also at one point I tried to kill lockdown, but unfortunately it didn't work. Eventually, after three days of killing Enderman, I had enough pills, so I headed back home. Once I was back on day 84, I wanted to go and see what Lockdown was up to, so I snuck over to his base. Once I got there, I waited a bit to see if I could see where he was. And then suddenly, Lockdown appeared from the wall. It seemed like he had something secret hidden underground. So once he was gone, I decided to investigate. After a bit of looking round, I found this hidden button. So I pressed it and suddenly the piston door opened. I quickly rushed inside and I had discovered Lockdown's secret base. I then searched around all his rooms and corridors, but then I had an idea. The next day, I returned with everything I would need for my next prank. I quickly replaced one of Lockdown's chests with a trap one, and then I wired it up to some TNT. This meant that if he tried to open it, his whole base would explode. So now that everything was set up, I quickly headed back home. But when I got back to my base, there was something waiting for me. Wait, what's that say? Lockdown life was hit. Oh my! Oh no. Oh no, no, no. No. Um... No! Is it all all four sides? I'm surrounded by lava. There's lava right above me as well. Hmm. I did that. Am I out? Okay. No, lava! Am I out? Yes, I'm out. Oh my, that was close.
If you want to see the rest of the damage on Lockdown's base, make sure to go check out his video. Anyway, by day 87, I was fed up with all of the pranks. So I decided to relax a bit and listen to some music. Um, anyway, on day 88, I decided to head back into the nether to try and get another blaze rod. This is because if I wanted to make any strength potions, I would need more blaze powder. Eventually, after a day of searching, I managed to find a closer fortress. So I headed inside and got another blaze rod. But before I ventured any further, I got too scared and headed back home. Once I got back on day 90, I knew that I would soon be leaving to go and find the stronghold. But I thought I should have some better transport than just walking, so I spent all of day 90 searching for a horse. And eventually this cool black horse caught my eye, so I quickly tamed it and brought it back home. Then the next two days I spent preparing for the end by enchanting a bow and making some potions. Finally, by the end of day 92, I was ready. In the morning, I quickly got on the back of my horse and threw one of my eyes. Once it guided me in the right direction, I hastily headed off in the search of the stronghold. After a while of travelling, I spotted Lockdown in this endless desert. And it turns out he too was searching for the stronghold. So the race was on to get there first. Soon enough, the eyes guided us right over the open ocean. So it was time to get in our boats and leave our horses behind. For several days and nights we explored the open water, and along the way we were shooting arrows back and forth. But eventually, after fighting off some pesky phantoms, our eyes sunk into the water. The next day we finally breached into the stronghold's walls, but now we had to find the portal. Finally, after a whole day of searching through the long and twisting corridors of the stronghold, we had found the portal. Quickly I scrambled to get the eyes placed into the frames, and before we knew it, the portal was lit. Finally, by day 99, we built up the courage and jumped into the end. Oh. Where even are we? Oh my! Right. No, this is just... If we fall, we're dead. Once we were on the main island, we both started firing our arrows up at the towers. But for some reason, I couldn't hit any of them. I can't hit anything. <laughs> you having a bit of trouble there? Shut up. Even though I was struggling, still, one by one, the crystals went down. Now, it was just us versus the dragon. Oh! <laughs> You're gonna die! Come on, Enderman! Ah! Oh. Ow, I'm gonna die! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> uh, you got you. Ah! Oh! 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 No! Yes! Come on, it's so low! If I can do this, I win. Oh, it's so close! Come down! Yes! Yes, go down! No, it's mine! It's really mine! Ah! Come down! What are you doing, Please. dragon? Oh! Yes! Oh, yes! Ow! Come on! No! Yes! No! Let's go! Finally, once the dragon was dead, we collected its egg and headed back to our homes. Hey, so what's this about a truce? So I was thinking, now that the dragon's dead and we've completed all of our goals, why don't we have a nice little truce? Yeah, okay, that sounds good. Yeah, alright. Okay, well, I'll see you soon then. See ya. Actually... What? Ah! No! <laughs> Why would you do this? 